Thank you very much, uh, Peter. Good morning. Uh, to discuss uh, in a, way, uh, a new approach in water management. What is behind that? There are a few issues behind this debate. The first issue is that in the preparation of the Rio Plus 20 event, water people played only a marginal role. This process was primarily driven by uh, the international colleagues in our ministries and uh, in our international organizations, but uh, water was more or less marginalized in this uh, process. This is, was totally different from uh, Joburg. In Joburg, we had the sanitation goal and had the, uh, the drink, safe drinking water goal and the, uh, and the uh, river basin plan goal. And uh, these two things changed a lot in the meantime. The second thing we thought about in this debate was when we started in the preparation of Rio, we asked ourselves about the success stories of integrated water resources management. And it became very clear that integrated water resources management is an interesting concept, but outside the water community, you have no buy-in into this concept because the integrated water resources management concept is primarily driven by water people and this is a kind of attitude that the water people tell the energy, the food and the other water related sectors uh, uh, what to do. But in the integrated water resources management approach, we never asked, is there original knowledge of water management in the various sectors? And this led us to the uh, Nexus approach and uh, we started to discuss uh, this in the framework of the Bonn Conference, taking up food security and energy security. There are, as you can see, much more other things. There is biodiversity, ecosystems. There is, uh, there is a whole field of energy crops. There are others too, and uh, energy, for example, is a quite uh, diverse uh, point. It was also clear that we have outside drivers in this process, if it comes to urbanization, if it comes to population growth, and it comes to adaptation to climate change. And we thought we put this triangle of water supply security, food security, and energy security in a focus and see how we can uh, work with that. We also have governance and uh, I don't forget economics uh, in this context, uh, but uh, uh, I think this was how we, uh, how we uh, discussed it. And the interesting thing for the whole debate was that in the preparation phase we came, we we had a close link, I have to say by accident, but fortunately by accident, with the World Economic Forum. And we identified very clearly that the last report of the World Economic Forum was a report on the water, energy and food security nexus. We didn't know that when we started uh, this debate. And it became crystal clear and their economics uh, uh, comes in uh, that the big companies identified water, the water resources issue as, as one of the most risky element in the development of, uh, of, the, uh, of the industries. So 
this was something where we thought we cannot be on the wrong track if we are talking about the nexus and we have to see the uh, economic community, the business community was uh, ahead of us in debating this issue. The diversity of this issue becomes also, became also clear when we mirrored it with the sustainability uh, elements. There is the social dimension. This is still something we have uh, to deal with. Uh, this applies for the bottom billion still, and uh, this applies for water, energy, and for food security. And there is uh, an economic issue in the social dimension because uh, if you see the process of land grabbing in the in Africa, then in essence, land grabbing is a water grabbing issue because land without water has no value. So this is something what is very difficult in the social context because the subsistence agriculture, which is, which is done uh, on a lower level in the communities there, is endangered by such uh, development. The economic dimension, this is, this is an issue of uh, perverse subsidies, creating war well, war, more wells while using less resource input. If it comes to food security, it became very clear that there is a figure we have to think about. This is a figure that 40% of all produced agricultural products from the field to the fork never reach the fork. And uh, this is something where we have uh, to think about. And this means also, if we waste food, we waste water and we waste human resources they had been put in such a production. And there was also clear that the ecologic dimension cannot be ignored in this context. And uh, so far, it became clear that this triangle is the most pressing triangle we have uh, uh, to deal with. Water resources in the middle. And you can, you can on one hand side, see uh, this is something of developing countries. But if you go to Europe, or if you go to the US, or if you go to other developed countries, you can clearly identify that this is not a simple development issue. This is also an issue which, uh, which is burning for us in Europe. And therefore we decided to take this nexus perspective in helping to identify the interdependencies in this triangle. And I come back to the um, integrated water resources management issue. The integrated water resources management approach is a one-way approach. Get it or leave it is the message from the water side. This is a bit, uh, a bit uh, overdone probably, but I think this is the way we are dealing with this issue since a long time. And the water community is still surprised. Why is agriculture not accepting that integrated water resources management is so important? Because the agricultural community does not like to be told by the water community how to manage water. They like to get also on board and have it as a dialogue, as a street which goes in two directions. Yesterday I saw the, uh, this, uh, this was quite interesting. Uh, you, can, you can put a lot of, uh, of uh, issues in this, uh, in this system. And you always see that all three components are not independent from, 
uh, from each other. What I had been not able to do, this would be also an easy presentation for the implementation of the Water Framework Directive of EU water policy. You can put also the uh, common agricultural policy in, uh, in one corner and you can do the renewable energy policy there. And you will really see uh, energy crops are a very good uh, issue in this context. Uh, if you're producing uh, bioenergy in, uh, in having energy crops, then you have on one hand side a CO2 reduction if you have the CO2 tunnel view uh, on climate. But at the same time, your uh, there is harm for soil and there is pollution for water. And uh, at the same time, I will not overstress that you have also a food component uh, in, uh, in, this, uh, in this issue. Less in Europe than more uh, outside. So this is, from our point of view, the way we should think also when we are first developing our implementation strategies for, uh, the, uh, for the water policy in the EU, but the same applies uh, on the national level. This has direct consequences for the proce ongoing process on formulating sustainable development goals not simply water goals, not simply energy goals, not simply uh, food security goals. It's important to see the interdependencies if you are formulating uh, those, uh, those targets. And in this process, I personally think we need also the engagement of the water people. We cannot leave this issue simple to the climate people because Climate has a focus on CO2 and other uh, 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 harmful uh, emissions. But if you have only a CO2 perspective, you do a simple thing which cannot be in the framework of sustainability. You reduce CO2 on one hand side. But on the other hand side, you move pollution to soil and to water. And this cannot be a sensible concept to say the reduction of CO2 is in the focus, but we ignore what's going on on the left and the right side. This I call the collateral damages of, uh, of an, uh, of an f too much focused CO2 uh, climate uh, policy. This is um, once more uh, the issue we have to go to and thank you for your attention. My last sentence is integrated water resources management is an approach we should further use until we have not operationalized this nexus issue. But I think what is important to be clear that if we like to survive with such a concept, there is a need to involve the other sectors. The interesting thing is that uh, the World Bank defined a leading project uh, some weeks ago on uh, economic trade-offs of the water, water and energy nexus. And they are doing not the way we intend normally to do. They picked up the energy models, the energy sector in the bank is dealing with, and asked where are the gaps in these energy models, where we have to put in water, and this brought, started a debate which goes the other way around and 
where you get more acceptance from the energy side in discussing this issue. Thank you very much for your attention.